So we're here at the Whole Earth Festival. It's the 48th Whole Earth Festival. 48. So, 48th. And uh, how many have you been to? Uh, all of them. All of them. All right. And um, so you're Mike. I'm Mike. Hi, and, Mike. Um, so tell me about your first web. Um, I cut eighth grade to come to the Whole Earth Festival. I liked what I saw. All right. Well, and what keeps you coming back? Um, it's fun to put it on. Okay. It's fun to make the stuff happen, uh, to overcome the obstacles. What's your favorite part of the festival? It's a Thursday night. It's like seeing the bones and the sinew and a little bit of the muscle of the festival before the skin goes on. Gotcha. Cool. Well, thanks, Mike. See you next time. Okay. I'm going gonna, gonna to go... Right, there. right. So is this because the 48th annual? It depends on how you count. Okay. Okay. So 1969, there was a, a professor whose art class did a project, which was a, an event mm -hmm. on the on the quad. and that was what most people start count as the beginning. It was not called Whole Earth Festival. Right. It was just this thing that they did. So. Huh. See, the story I always run. heard was that, you know, the art class happened and then the, it was such a cool experience to witness that um, art happening that so many people tried to apply for the class that they just had way too many people to get into the class. Cool. And he said, well, instead of doing this as a class, we're just going to throw a festival. Okay. And so that was Jose Arguelles. And then they split the quad here in half and they had, you know, two different themes for different sides of the quad. And, but and was that thing. during that, that Earth Week? The whole well, that the, the, the first they were events. planning the festival, and then the whole Earth Week thing happened, and some of the people involved decided, oh, we should combine this. Okay. Yeah, and then and Peter Max did the art, right? Peter, that the Peter Max That's a really cool a piece. Poster, yeah. I'm gonna have to find that digitally and like throw that it's, up here. It's right here, and you can get that, and you can get that. I think let's go this way. Hey, come on. So this tea is um, this is Puer tea. Uh, it's okay, from okay. Yunnan Province in China, and it's fermented and then it's aged in a cake it's, it's actually aged in cool dry cakes yes oh, underground that's right the best oh. kind of deep wood. yes and so the the fermentation is from did, did you get a cup no not yet yeah grab one cuz these are these are dirty okay. yeah those are dirty um, the fermentation is actually from this the same yeast that's used for miso soup is is the, is the yeast that they use for fermenting puer. It's aspergillus. <laughs> Does the fermentation have something to do with why you can repeatedly steep it? Or is that just a, I just don't a know. Okay. No, I think you can, you can repeatedly can steep oolong too. Yeah. yeah. And actually oolong, the, vari the oolong variety is very similar to the variety that they use for making puer. And the actual pronunciation is not puer, 
It's pu'er. So it's like you take pu'er and you make it into two syllables, and it's pu'er. Yeah, we're gonna leave no trace, leave it cleaner than we found the quad, and work together.